Hello. Welcome on back to my channel. I hope you all are doing well and having a great start to your new year. Today's a really special video for me because I have a really special guest with us. Our model today is really one of the very first friends I had ever made when I first moved to Los Angeles many, 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 many moons ago. On her today, we created this dramatic yet elegant makeup look. We really bronzed up her skin and really smoked out the eye. It looks beautiful and it looks beautiful on just about anybody who wants to recreate it on themselves. So if you want to learn how I created this look right here, then keep on watching. So to begin with a fresh rose deep hydration oil infused serum, I'm going to prep the skin of our gorgeous model, Laura. What I do with this serum is I pour a bit of it into the palm of my hand, dunk my beauty blender into it, and then really press it into the skin. After the skin is prepped with that serum, I'm taking a good old facial razor to remove hairs around the brows and jawline. I may have shown this one other time on my channel before, but I love these little razors for this purpose. I usually do this step off camera, but for the sake of today's video, I wanted to show you. These are great to clean up the brows and any peach fuzz happening near the sideburns or the upper lip. I do this on myself almost every time before I apply my makeup. I take it right along my brows, my forehead, and even my upper cheek bone area. Um, it really makes the skin so smooth and really makes a huge difference in how products look on the skin. And you can really find these pretty much anywhere, Amazon, online, or your nearest neighborhood drugstore. Next, I'm using the Stay Naked Foundation from Urban Decay and applying this on with the same beauty blender I had used a minute ago for the skincare. I used about two pumps of this foundation, put it on the back of my hand first, and like I did with the serum, I'm really pressing this into Laura's skin. I'll take a look at what shade I used and I'll be sure to include it down below in the description box. It's a pretty good match to her face, but what you can't really see on camera because she's wearing a sweater, her face is much lighter than her shoulders and chest. So I'll be sure to next go in with a deeper shade foundation to bring in some warmth to her face so that everything is matching. That second foundation I was just speaking of is the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Foundation in the shade 10. And I'm applying this on using a fluffy face brush, starting with the perimeter of the forehead. I love a really bronzed forehead area, especially on someone Latina like Laura. I think it just looks so flattering. You know what it is. It kind of reminds me of how JLo has her makeup done. She goes kind of heavy with the bronzing around the face and I've always just kind of liked that. And although I'm bringing this around the forehead, below the cheekbones, under the jawline and chin, I'm not so much contouring with this. That's not my goal with this product. My goal here is simply to bring warmth to her face so that it matches the rest of her body and looks like she spent a good day at the beach. As for the blending goes, the brush will do most of this work for me because it's a liquid foundation we're using and not uh, a thick bronzing or contouring cream, it's pretty easy to blend out with a brush. Whenever I get asked from someone what shade foundation they should get for themselves, I always recommend getting two shades. One for the very lightest you'll be, usually around the winter time of the year when you're not in the sun as much. And the second shade should be two to three shades deeper than the very deepest your skin will get, usually in the summer. This way throughout the year, you'll always be able to perfectly match your skin tone by just mixing the two together. But by getting that second shade foundation that's deeper than you are at your very tannest, it makes for the perfect liquid bronzer for around the face, just like what I'm showing here. Now with the Tantor Contour Cream from Huda Beauty in the shade Medium, I'm applying this on with the same brush I was just using, right in the hollow points of her cheekbones and along her jawline. This is what I consider to be contouring, rather than the bronzing I was just doing with the Armani foundation. Once I have this placed where I want it, I'll head back to my Beauty Blender to blend it out. Now, mind you, this Beauty Blender is the same one I've been using for the skincare and foundation, so the remains of that product in the sponge will transfer over as I blend out this contour and make it just that much more seamless.
Okay, so once I have that contour blended out, I'm gonna move on to concealing. To do so, I'm using the Born This Way concealers from Too Faced in two different shades. The first shade I'm using is called Warm Beige, and I'm applying this on to the areas of the face that I want to conceal, including the under eye area, the very center of the forehead, and around the mouth and chin before blending it out with a beauty blender. All right, so I'm just about done blending out this concealer. I promise the rest of this tutorial will be a little quicker. I just like including this blending footage for y'all because these are the steps I spend most of my time on. With brows and eye makeup and lips, I'm, I'm pretty quick and messy with, well, I shouldn't say messy. I just, I, um, I don't know, I don't aim for perfection when it comes to eye makeup, I'll say that. <laughs> but the skin, yeah, I like perfecting the blend of the complexion products as much as I possibly can. And plus, the skin really is my favorite part of the process. So next, I'm using that second concealer in the shade Vanilla, which is brighter than the first one I used to really brighten up that inner corner of the eye. Laura is a glam girl. She loves a bright under eye, a, a dramatic eye makeup, the whole thing. So we're gonna give her that today. Once we have all of these liquid products blended together, we need to set it with powder. To do so, I'm using this translucent setting powder from One Size Beauty, and I'm applying this on with my powder puff. I'm first applying this to the under eye area because this area is the first to crease, and I'll then move on to the rest of the face. As you see here, I'm not really baking the under eye area, but I am baking the sides of the nose by bringing this powder right up to the sides of that contour, which will brighten this area and give the appearance of a slimmer nose. As for the rest of the face, I'm going in with a very, <laughs> very light hand with this powder. I think Laura is, is so beautiful, so I knew I wanted to style her hair out of her face at the end. I did a quick and easy top knot bun situation so that we can really see her face and her skin. So because I don't have to worry about the hair falling in front of her face and moving the makeup around, I can get away with not having to use so much powder to lock it into place. Thus, keeping that luminous sheen to the skin from the skincare and foundation we used. To lift and brighten the cheekbone area, I'm placing a small amount of this powder to the outer parts of her eyes, which will also act as a blueprint later on for where I'll want to apply the eyeshadow. And then I'm also placing a little extra powder to the outer corners of her lips because that's where makeup tends to crease on her throughout the day. Next, with this pressed powder from Sephora in the shade Neutral Mocha, I'm using this as a bronzer. I'm applying this with a face brush that is so, um, so, uh, <laughs> oh goodness, I can't think of the word I'm looking for. It's the, the opposite of dense. You know what I'm saying, it's, it's, it's thin, it's sparse. So I'm not gonna get a chunky application of this. It's just finely brushed on. With this same bronzer, I'm applying this to the lid. As you can see, I did the other eye off camera just to get an idea of what direction I was taking with this. But applying this bronzer was the very first step to create a backdrop for the shadows and liner we'll later be applying on top of it. With that same eyeshadow brush, I'm just pinching it a bit to get a more precise application for the lower eyelid. With the Alyssa Edwards eyeshadow palette by Anastasia Beverly Hills, I'm gonna begin packing on that brown eyeshadow shade in the palette with a flat and dense eyeshadow brush. I'm packing this on, but also beginning to fan it out towards the crease. The eye makeup today is quick and easy, which is perfect for me because as I said earlier, I tend to be pretty quick with eye makeup. <laughs> I'm not one to really use five different eyeshadow shades and, and, and 10 different brushes. You know what I mean? Unless I'm in the mood. There are some days where I wanna do a cut crease and liner and lashes and glitter and rhinestones and fireworks and put on a full show, but <laughs> not today, not today. I'm, I'm, I'm easing my way into 2021, <laughs> slow and steady. So I've head back to the first shadow brush I used and just running it through the crease, diffusing that brown eyeshadow out. What makes this eye makeup so easy is that 
a smoky eye doesn't have to be perfect, you know? It's just one of those looks where you can just throw on some shadow and a liner, some mascara, and there you have it. And of course, it's versatile. You can make this as smoky and dramatic as you want it to be. As you just saw there, I'm using this Black Point Made Gel Liner Pencil from one size and running this through the bottom and upper lash lines to deepen the smoky eye and make it a bit more dramatic, flora. Applying this, especially to the upper lash line, will really help later on to disguise the lash band of the false lashes we'll be using. And it doesn't have to be a perfect application either, since I'll be smudging it out. To do that, I'll head back to the eyeshadow palette and dip into the black eyeshadow and buff out that liner with a detail blending brush on both the top and bottom lash line. Also, with this black eyeshadow, I'm running a bit through the crease. Not completely necessary, but heck, why not? It's giving us a little extra drama and gives the eye makeup a little extra personality. Now for the brows, I'm using the NYX Micro Brow Pencil in the shade Espresso and building up her brow into the shape she likes it to be. I really love these pencils from NYX. I go back and forth between these and the, um, the Brow Wiz from Anastasia Beverly Hills because I do like using a really precise pencil for the brows. And I like that it's a retractable pencil. You don't have to sharpen it, which makes things so much easier and so much more efficient. To clean up and highlight her brow bone, I'm heading back to the concealer brush and using what I have left on it from before to apply directly underneath the brow. <laughs> Dang, I, I, I just noticed how busted that brush looks. <laughs> What a mess. Anyways, I'm next taking my ring finger here to tap and blend this out so that it's diffused and it isn't harsh. And then lastly, of course, to set it, I'll take what powder I have left in my powder puff and press it into the concealer so that it doesn't move or budge throughout the day. Next, with a Lash Brag Mascara from Anastasia Beverly Hills, I'm applying a thick coat of mascara to the top lashes, really working this in, starting from the root of the lash. I'm applying a false lash neck, so being sure to get a thick coat of mascara on beforehand is important because it'll really help in disguising the band of the false lash we use, which is the style Eve from Doll Beauty. I'm not one to use a dramatic lash often, or at least not as often as I used to, but when I do, I really like their lashes. This style really really amped up the eye makeup to be even more dramatic and even more glam than it already was. For blush, I'm using this blush palette from NYX. And as you see there, th this palette has been through it all with me. It's been through some rough times. I've had it for quite a while now and I, I really love it. I mix a few of the shades in there, the orange, the peaches, the pinks to create the perfect custom blush color for Laura. And as you already know, if you've seen my videos before, I love blush, so I do go kind of heavy with it. I bring it up onto the high points of the cheekbones and even a bit underneath the eyes. And as promised, I'm heading back to my mascara to apply a coat to the bottom lashes. To bring back some glow to the skin, I'm heading over to this Becca highlighter in the shade Opal, and I'm applying this onto the high points of her cheekbones and brow bones with an eyeshadow brush. As you see here, I'm also applying this highlighter down the center of the nose, the cupid's bow, and even to the inner corners of her eyes. Next, I'm using this lip liner from KKW Beauty in the shade Classic Kim to line Laura's lips. I don't know if this pencil comes in a uh, like a full size, standard size in this shade. This is the mini size that they sent me in a holiday kit, but I really like this shade. It, it's the perfect brownie nude to contour the lips to create that perfect pout. To fill in the lip color, I'm using this lip gloss from Anastasia Beverly Hills in the shade Toffee. Usually you see me using a lipstick and then a sheer gloss on top, but when I do use just an opaque lip gloss like what I'm doing today, this is one of my favorites to use for a nude lip. And lastly, I'm using the Urban Decay All Nighter Setting Spray to set the makeup and to lock it into place, which makes this the final step in creating this glamorous look on my naturally beautiful friend.
we have it kids. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to give this video a big ol' thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. You can also check out more of my work on my Instagram at Painted by Spencer. And until next time, I'll see you soon.